Welcome to the Barcelona Podcast, episode 142. And this little opinion is brought to you by the most influential voices in the FC Barcelona community. I'm Dan Hilton, and I am all alone to get this show started because we have some business to discuss before we get into the show. As some of you might have seen, if you follow my personal Twitter account, I did have some surgery this week, and I've been quite out of commission for a bit now. Uh, you can probably hear it uh, in my voice now, but the good news is that it's for the better, and the doctor said it'll allow me to make even better podcast videos and other content moving forward. Now, while he didn't say that, and the season for Barcelona didn't end the way we wanted to, losing to Valencia in the Copa del Rey final, uh, you know, as I've been sitting in bed recovering, I've got to watch the dumpster fire that is Barcelona's social media, and so I knew with all that happening that I wasn't going to be able to do this show alone. So today's show is something that we haven't tried yet before. Over the course of the last week, I've had some of our regular guests and friends of the show record their thoughts on the Copa del Rey final and lament the painful end of the season. So these are their thoughts. Let's get started with Mike Miller. Bonjour tout le monde. This is Michael Miller from Le Blog Rana Podcast. So my impressions of uh, this uh, Copa del Rey final is that it has been a long time coming. Nothing that we have seen this season would have allowed us to see it any differently than how it turned out. The players were seemingly not motivated for this final, and I don't think that it's because of the Anfield trauma, but really I think that it's because of something that has been going on in Barcelona for many years now, but is finally paying off. And unfortunately, it is what we, what I like to call Barcelona's country club, right? Older players getting way more playing time that they deserve. And among these players... I would have to name, by name, Sergio Busquets, Ivan Rakitic, Sergio Roberto, and Jordi Alba. I would normally also include in that group Gerard Piquet, but he came out of absolutely nowhere and had his best season in many, in many years. Is it because of his retirement from the national team from from La Roja perhaps but surprisingly enough he had a way better season than I would have uh, I would have expected from him adding to that and that is a very popular subject on the Barcelona podcasts Facebook group uh, but I would have to say Ernesto Valverde's poor choices poor tactical choices his tendency to 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 be over conservative rather than follow our tradition, which is to to play off- offensive minded football, uh, possession football, and he's doing the exact opposite of that. He's way too pragmatic for the quality that we have uh, available to us. And it's becoming it's becoming a recurring theme. I'm sure that many of you have seen the Anfield the remontada coming, even though all the experts out there were pretty much giving the, the, the tie to Barcelona after 90 minutes because of the way we played in the first uh, on the first leg in camp now, we didn't play better than Liverpool. We were just more opportunistic and whatever we tried worked but they were they were clearly better than us and they just they just missed their chances and a lot of people think that if Dembele had converted his chance uh, during injury time uh, we could have won 4-0 and it would have been that much more difficult for Liverpool to come back personally I don't think so if we had won 4-0 at camp now Liverpool would have figured out a way to score five goals in Anfield. Uh, motivation was just not there. Maybe it was fatigue. Maybe it's the fact that uh, half of our starters don't have to fight to earn their spots. And 
if it wasn't for Messi and Ter Stegen, I don't think we would have won any trophy this season. Uh, Messi and Ter Stegen were absolutely out of this world, uh, as they usually are. But unfortunately, we haven't renewed our squad when it was time to do it. And that is not Ernesto Valverde's fault. It is perhaps the sporting direction's fault, led by Pep Segura, but also including uh, Eric Abidal, Ramon Planes, the director who is in charge of the sporting decisions, uh, namely Jordi Mestre, and the board of directors. So basically, this year's failure, as well as last year, was of institutional proportion rather than the responsibility of one man or even one 11-man squad. But really, in my honest opinion, this debacle, as well as last year's, was an institutional problem and... We can say all day long that last year we won the double and this year we won La Liga. We made the semi-final of the Champions League for the first time in four years. We appeared on Copa del Rey final. Even, even considering that, I don't think personally that result warrants uh, success. Success in Barcelona has always depended on the manner in which we play. Therefore, and I speak for myself and I, I'm sure that I speak for a whole bunch of people, if we play well and lose, there is more pride in that than playing an awful, difficult to watch style of football and win trophies. Therefore, everybody wants changes this summer. I personally doubt anything of note will happen. And next season, we're going to come back with the same tired old legs, partly because of the Copa America. Uh, Luis Suarez is way past his prime. And we cannot do what the Argentinian national team does and rely on Lionel Messi constantly. That being said, thank you very much for a wonderful season, Dan, and to all the listeners... Forza. Thanks, Mike. Next up from Barcelona is Levan. Levan here, or Barcelona, for those who know me from Twitter. What a season. What a season. We almost did it. We almost went all the way, and that would have been crazy, insane, mental. You asked me four months ago what we needed to do to win the treble, and I said focus on the Champions League. Not in my worst nightmares did I ever think I should have replied. Avoid screwing up another three-goal advantage. I mean, WTF, double FS. JFC, FML. I don't care about the Copa loss. I told you back then I didn't care about the Copa Aurea. I almost never have. And I'm okay with not winning it for a fifth consecutive time. You know, in many ways, a losing season is easier than what we have experienced these last two years. Winning the league is awesome. I mean, it really is awesome. But if you are the only team in the running for that top spot by the end of December, well, you know, it doesn't leave you with all that much to celebrate in May. Does that make us victims of our own success? You bet. Even more so when this success makes it so that half the players feel they are untouchable. Like many culés, not only on Barca Twitter, but also right here in Barcelona. I was kind of hoping that we would lose the Copa del Rey final. Why? Because it's our best chance at cleaning house. Even though in the end that might not even happen. But it's our best chance. And if it doesn't happen, the joke's on us. It's going to be a long summer. And it's hard to be optimistic right now. Because Bartomeu does not inspire optimism. But I'm going to try anyway. Man, I mean, it's just hard to be optimistic. There are many ways for this team to improve, but also many ways in which they can uh, either fail to improve us or even make it worse. Let's be optimistic. Frankie de Jong will be a delight to see on the pitch. There, I found a positive. Coutinho will no longer be at the club. There's another one. I mean, minus one negative is a positive, right? We might even get rid of Pep Segura. And a lot of people will see that as a positive. The only thing I mean... The only thing I think we need to be careful for is to um, to hang on to the people who turned Paulinho, Alcácer, Jerry Mina, Lucas Digne, De La Feo, Alex Vidal and Marlon into 150 million euros because we need to sell players. We need to clean house and we need we need to get money for some of the players that, that are outgoing. We also need to keep in mind that the difference between a treble and a humiliation this season was very, very small. So we should definitely give Balverde a lot of credit 
before we take him on a helicopter ride and throw him out into the Mediterranean. Psych. I'm just kidding. We should throw him out on the pitch at the camp now at halftime during the gamper. See if we can hit the penalty spot from 300 yards up in the air. That would be great for the fans, and it would also motivate the next coach not to play Sergio Roberto on the right wing. But I don't want to talk about the coach anymore, because I would just say what a lot of other people are saying. He needs to leave, and so do some of the big names in the dressing room, and hopefully next season we'll get some of that excitement back. I just want to have some fun before the gods of football ram their claws up our derrieres, up so high into our torsos that they can pull our hearts back out. I mean, it's either that, or Ernesto stays. And if Ernesto stays, it means that we'll be watching Rakitic suck the blood out of our eyes until they crumple up like dried raisins. But hey, why drift into negativity? We are a beautiful club, and I wouldn't want to be a fan of any other. We, um, we call it football. C'est el bases, el miyokia, el dia del partit. I'll be in the stadium, and who knows? With a bit of luck, our season will be amazing. So keep calm and forza Barca. Just wonderful imagery there from Levan. Uh, teetering on having to put the explicit tag on this show, but I'm happy he kept it a little bit restrained, uh, just enough. Uh, now time for Alex Tuica. I think the Copa del Rey final was supposed to be a balm to the battered Catalan soul, but in the end it only added to the pain, um, because the defeat um, yeah, added to the pain of the club after losing the, the game, the important semi-final um, to Liverpool, they at least wanted to win the double and therefore like save their seasons, their season more or less. But yeah, they ended up losing out on another trophy, and I think this was really a bad thing for the club. It could be a good thing because now um, maybe they they will make the necessary steps moving forward. But for now, it was a it was really a, a low blow for Barcelona. I think in the ga- uh, the game itself, um, they looked pretty dull. Barca wasn't at their best, clearly. I think they played sluggishly. They definitely looked mentally tired after they conceded um, the first and the second goal. You could really see that they they are mentally exhausted, that it's a, another blow for them. Um, You could also see that the squad is old, that the squad really needs a revamp, um, that they need new players, fresh blood um, brought in. So, yeah, a lot to do, I think, in the the summer. I think you you need to reconstruct the the entire roster. Um, I think it's really necessary to bring in some fresh players. Um, because, let's be honest, look at Sergio Busquets, at Jordi Alba, Piquet, Luis Suarez, all are 30 years or older. So you could totally see that against Liverpool and against Valencia as well, if the opponent is, is really coming at them, um, that they really struggle, which is normal, obviously, because they, they all played like on the highest level for 10-something years, right? So the decline is normal. But you could could really see it, and yeah, the squad needs a revamp. I think the, um, Frankie de Jong signing was the necessary step and is a really, really a good piece um, to add to the club. But they need more. I think they need to sign Matisse Delict because Piquet is already thirty two years old. So coming maybe in two years or something, we will talk about him stepping down slowly but steadily. And I think Delict looks like the, the perfect um, successor of him. Yeah, I think overall Barca really need more players, as I've mentioned before. I, ne- I think they need another player in midfield. In my opinion, they should get um, rid of Rakitic. I really think they need to sell him. I think they have a market for him, so he should bring in the necessary funds. And then, yeah, they, they, they need um, players up front, obviously. The most pressing uh, issue is the centre-forward, obviously, with Suarez declining and, and his knee issues. And, yeah, it's difficult to, to, to say who they should br- uh, bring in because of the profile they, um, they need. I think, yeah, this is a really, really difficult topic, but they definitely need a new centre-forward. Probably even a winger, because Dembélé, we saw it, he's injured a lot, so he's not that reliable, unfortunately. I think Malcolm is, unfortunately, not good enough. 
Um, Valverde obviously didn't didn't trust him enough, didn't give him enough minutes, which was a, another issue. But I still think whenever he played, you could sense that he doesn't have exactly the um, the level required for Barcelona. So I do need, think Barca need another winger, a versatile player even that can maybe play different positions. Um, I think Coutinho's time will be up, which then again means another roster spot is open in midfield and on the wings as well. So a lot to do for Bartomeu, for Ar Abidal. Um, yeah, this squad needs a revamp and we've seen this in the last two games. And it's going to be a busy, interesting summer for all of us. All right, thanks, Alex. Last but certainly not least, we have none other than Diana Christine. Hey, guys. So my take on the final and basically all of Barca's season is that, well, there's not much of a story to the final beyond the fact that the, this team died at Anfield. More precisely, it started dying the moment the second goal of Liverpool went in and it officially died the moment the fourth goal went in. This is mostly a result of the injury that happened last year against Roma because they didn't really overcome that trauma and everybody just, you know, like focused like crazy on the Champions League as the, you know, the, the way to heal themselves. So if you experience trauma and you think that this is the thing that's going to fix you, this is what is going to make everything better. And then you lose that thing and you get completely devastated all over again from the initial trauma and from the secondary trauma. So yes, it's a sport and it's football and everything, but the psychology of it comes into it much more when you're dealing with such high level of, com of competition and such a demanding environment. So, yeah, the Valencia final was not not worth being analyzed by itself more than more than to say that the team was already dead. It had some like, I don't know, muscle reflexes in the second half to try and get something out of it, mostly based on ego and stuff and I guess like Messi and Piquet almost revived a dead body, but they couldn't, so here we are. And Valencia played better, and they were the clearly deserved winners. So, yeah, that was it. Beyond that, there's the story of the season. A season in which I've enjoyed, like, I don't know, 10 games at most out of the whole year, and that's, you know, very bad, obviously. I think that Valverde has to go at this point because the team needs a change and the changing the manager is the most, you know, simple way to achieve this. As we saw in the summer of 2014 when everybody was sad and everything about the season that was and about Tito and all of that. And uh, then Luis Enrique came with a new energy and, uh, you know, things got better. Obviously not from the start, but, you know, it changed things. And we need that again. And I think that we need a coaching change to bring that. It's the easiest way to fix this particular issue. The broader issues come in the fact of the limits that are within the squad. The limits imposed by main players being mostly over 30, not having enough speed, not having, you know, like clear wingers, not having enough width and attack, everything getting stuck in the middle and relying every single play on Messi to do something with it so that we can attack. So, yeah, I think that Valverde has tried to manage this, but he's mostly tried to cover up one player's limitation by modifying the role of another one, and that just made both players look bad or worse than they are so yeah it the team needs a change in the form of the manager this isn't to say obviously that it's all the fault of the manager because you know there's the squad and uh, most of those issues start mostly I think with I mean in my opinion it's the main problem is the fact that um, there's a clearly uh 
struggle of player power within the club because this board knows that they only got elected in 2015 because the players won the treble. The players and Luis Enrique, Luis Enrique obviously, but he's gone, so the players remain. And they know that their continuity and their existence as a board is tied to these players having su- success because they're they're not self-sustainable beyond the players so yeah the players know this the players I, I i mean i don't blame them everybody is selfish but they've leveraged this to get better contracts and it has led us to have the biggest wage bill in the in football and all of sport i think and that is has been an issue because, I mean, I don't like the man, but I can't imagine that Florentino Perez would have succumbed to all of the, you know, protracted negotiations and leaks in the press that player X wasn't happy and stuff like that. Because he's, you know, not that kind of a, he's a much more powerful president and can do more of what he wants, not what the player players want. So, yeah, I think that uh, we need to have a better midfield, a better structure in the team that allows the team to move the ball forward, to build play from the back, to not have Messi have to come to the midfield or get the ball from the defenders and stuff like that. I think we need to have more speed in attack. I think we need a new striker or, I don't know, somebody who can run in attack, I guess, anybody at this point. We need... Wingers, we need, I don't know, I th- I guess uh, if we had a structure that was functional, if we had width and attack, if we had more speed, if everything, you could maybe do with not having to do all of the transfers at once. But I think the main problem that for me is in midfield and attack, at least, you know, you need like one or two players in important players in both of those areas the rest of the issues can be dealt with but those are you know like really important and um yeah i don't know there's a lot of rumors flying around and i never pay attention to those because in times of crisis barca barca's rumor machine gets even worse than it normally is and it's normally horrible so i'm not gonna play into that game i'm just gonna focus on you know what's official and not and deal with whatever comes until next season i guess all we can do is hope that out of self-preservation at least this very very bad board (laughs) manages to do something right and move us forward i don't trust them to do this but All I can do is hope because I have no other power beyond that. So yeah, Vizca Barca. Lots of great points there from Diana and all of our guests. A big thank you to them for their end of the season opinions. We'll continue to digest the season that was and look forward to the season that is on the horizon all summer long as we have some exciting things planned. Next week, I am still away and recovering. So if you liked our France and Hungary shows, then we've got another good one for you. That'll be coming out again next week. After that, I'll be back to really get into how to fix Barcelona, transfer news, hopefully all good news, the Women's World Cup, where the Barcelona Femini have 15 players more than any other club team has representation at the World Cup, and there are the other tournaments obviously going on with the UEFA Nations League and the Copa America, where uh, Messi will be attempting to get that coveted trophy that keeps eluding him and all those finals that we've talked about before in the past. So with all that in the near future, that about wraps it up for this show. Thanks again for tuning in, and a personal thank you for all those that sent messages and encouragement uh, and good luck before, and again, well wishes after the surgery. So again, really from a personal note, uh, thank you a ton for that. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in to the show as well. You can tap in your app and check out the show notes to subscribe. You can find us on social media too. We're on Twitter at the Barcelona Pod or at Hilton D13 for me, and on Instagram at the Barcelona Pod. Our close Facebook group is tbpod.link backslash group. Deeper dives and discussions, and you can also help us out on Patreon to continue making these shows at tbpod.link backslash Patreon. We're also on YouTube now at the Barcelona Podcast. Check us out and hit that subscription button. And again, remember to not only thank you to all of our guests from me, but don't forget to follow all of our guests, all four of them from today's show, uh, down in the show notes as well. Just click on their names and that will send it to their very, very, very influential Twitter accounts. So thanks for listening to the Barcelona Podcast. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. 
before Sabarsak. <laughs>